Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part four of study the word of God or be deceived by the devil. Uh, hopefully this should be in the end. Listen, uh, you might want to pause right here and uh, take a look at the um, New Year's uh, celebration display at the Seattle Needle. And take a look at Project Blue Beam in action. Boy, I'll tell you what, they had DNA, what looked like DNA, the double helix. Um, if you don't know what Project Blue Beam is, it's a uh, light, it's basically a light show. I don't know if they're using lasers or not, but I mean, they're making images in the sky with lights. I don't know, maybe lasers, I don't know. But uh, it's pretty incredible. I will try to remember to post a link so that you could take a look at it. But a lot of New Age imagery uh, showed a uh, worm turning into a butterfly. Uh, it showed uh, a lotus. Now, the lotus is uh, a symbol of Buddhism, New Age. Uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. So, all right. Parts one, two, and three, we covered other stuff. Uh, Satan, in part three, we Satan tried to have rulership in heaven. My opinion is that uh, somehow the Lord gave devil a lease on earth for a certain amount of time. I don't know, but it seems it appears to be that way. And the Lord is going to use the devil to try and test everybody to see who will follow him and who will not. And one of the things that's really frightening for unbelievers, you know, if the devil can f trick you into doing something really like the unpardonable sin, now, there's a number of sins that will not be forgiven. Unbelief is one of those. You didn't believe the Lord. You didn't trust in the Lord. You didn't love the Lord. That's not going to be forgiven once you die. As long as you have the breath of life, you have a chance. But if you commit the unpardonable sin, and that was, I believe it was in the book of Mark, I don't want to make this a big, long study, okay? But they attributed the, the miracles of Jesus to the devil. And there's only one group of people that I know that do that. And, uh, yeah, the you-know-whos. They, they say that Jesus was a master of the Kabbalah. Yeah, he did his miracles by the power of the devil. And Jesus said, how can Satan cast out Satan? And that was attributing the works of the Holy Spirit to Satan. That will not be forgiven. Absolutely not. Uh, you can read about it in Mark chapter 3. But in verse 30, uh, it was... It says, because they said he hath an unclean spirit. They were saying that Jesus was possessed of a devil or a demon, whatever you want to call it. I don't think so. I think they're possessed of a devil. Another unpardonable sin is worshiping the beast or the devil. I mean, let's face it. You take the, the mark of the beast, 666, in whatever form it is, you're toast. I mean, there's just no, there's no going back. I mean, you might, maybe if you take it and then 
and then deny the uh, the beast as Lord. Uh, possibly, I guess the Lord would probably, you know, and you get your head cut off for the faith. Yeah, I, 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 my opinion is, you know, if you die for the faith, that's it. You, you're in, that's your ticket to the kingdom. But people that, uh, the Bible says to, uh, Jesus said that he that endureth to the end, the same shall be sh saved. You know, you, you can't be a believer for 30 years and then the beast comes and then you take the mark of the beast and then tell Jesus, well, I served you for 30 years. Well, you didn't endure the end. You know, that's why we need to study and know what are the tricks of Satan. Now, Satan tried to get worship in heaven. Didn't work. He was cast out of heaven. And I know I've been covering a lot of this stuff that in this series I have covered in the past. I have beat that horse till it's black and blue and that horse is probably dead. I beat that dead horse over and over and over. But, uh, but here's the deal. Satan wants worship. He wants to take as many of us with him to hell. And where is he? Where does he want to be worshipped? You know, you talk to people and they'll say, oh, well, you know, uh, Mystery Babylon, right? Oh, well, that's America, or that's New York City, or that's Rome, Rome, Rome. Or you could listen to Ken Hoven, uh, oh, the Islamic Antichrist, you know, or uh, I forget his name. Wally Show, whatever his name is. Wally Shobat or Shubit or Shobit, whatever his name is, I forget. But they're pushing this Muslim Antichrist. You know, Muslims, Islam considers Jesus a sinless prophet. A sinless prophet. Does that sound like he, they're denying him? I mean, you know, compared to the other ones that hang out in the Middle East, the rulers in the Jerusalem right now, compared to them, that's... That's, uh, you know, compared to what they call him, you know, uh, being possessed of a devil. Mary was a whore that had sex with a devil or, well, depends on which rab I you listen to. Uh, either Mary had sex with the devil or uh, a Roman soldier named Pantera, which she got paid, I think it was 20 pieces of silver, you know. Um, that's a pretty expensive, uh, yeah, whatever. That's what they teach. And that Jesus did his power, uh, his miracles by the power of Satan. So, who sounds better? Uh, somebody that says Jesus is possessed of a devil or somebody that says that Jesus is an, a sinless prophet of the Lord. And they want you to think that the Muslims are the Antichrist. I don't think so. All I know is this. If you were Satan and you wanted worship and you wanted to do everything in opposition to the Lord, you want to rule from America, from New York City, Mecca, Islam? How about Istanbul, Turkey? Uh, huh. Let's take a look at Turkey for a minute. Now, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 12, Jesus is speaking here. Uh, maybe I should go back just a little bit. Yeah, let's go back a little bit. How about Revelation 2, verse 8? 
And unto the children, uh, and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty. So he knows their works, their good works, right? And their tribulation, their trouble, and poverty. But thou art rich. Rich in what? Spiritual things, probably. Physically, poverty. Rich in spiritual things. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. You know, I've never, never, never seen not one Bible commentary ever explain this. It's like this verse does not exist. Verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into FEMA prison camps. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's, that's the Bob translation. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall, be, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. But Bob, I was told the pre-trib rapture. That ain't the oh well it's going. On. Uh well, you know, you could either listen to John Hagee or you could listen to Jesus. Uh I prefer Jesus personally, you know. But that hey, that that's just me. What can I tell you? Verse eleven. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not, shall not be hurt of the second death. See, there's two deaths. There's a spiritual death, which is the second death. And there's a, phys a physical death, which is the first death. Virtually everybody is going to suffer a physical death. As of right now, everybody living, Elijah and Enoch, Elijah and Enoch are the only two people, the Old Testament, that never died. They were taken by the Lord. And honestly, I know for a fact Eli, uh, Elijah is coming back as one of the two witnesses to proclaim judgments against Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. Personally, I think it's Enoch, the second witness. Some people say Moses eh, because of the um, uh, transfiguration when Jesus was on the mountain and transfigured. And Elijah and Moses appeared to them. I won't tell anybody they're wrong if they believe that. But, you know, uh, Moses represented the law. Elijah represented the prophets. You know, the law and the prophets. But uh, personally, I think it's Enoch and Elijah. But hey, that's just me. But they will see the second death. There will be, they will be killed by the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit, and their bodies will lie in the street for three days, and then they'll ascend up to heaven. But there will be a small group of people alive who never taste death. They will be... Uh, transformed from this body of flesh into their spirit bodies. And if you died, it'll be your the resurrection. The church calls it the rapture, but, you know, I hate to use that word, 
because it conjures up. And you know what witches do? They conjure demons, right? Satanists conjure demons. Well, the rapture is uh, conjured up as the pre-trib thingy. Uh, but the resurrection is a Bible word. And that's the word I really like to use. But there's going to be people that never taste of death, physical death. And they'll be transformed into their physical body, or from a physical to a spiritual body. And that'll be the day. I always had a sneaking suspicion I might be part of that group. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'm even worthy. Well, I'm definitely not worthy, but definitely not worthy. Uh, I don't know if I'll be that blessed. I, I don't know. All I know is virtually everybody tastes physical death. And those that are not resurrected to eternal life, every one of them will be hurt of the second death, which is spiritual death. Revelation 2.11 He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So if we overcome, we will not see spiritual death. Listen to this. Verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos. Ah, where's Pergamos? It was a city in what was called Greece. And guess what? It was invaded by the Muslims, and they killed the Greeks, and they took it over. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he, which hath the sharp sword with two edges. And who is the one that has the sharp sword with two edges? Uh, Jesus. You know, it cuts both ways. It cuts coming and it cuts going. Either side. Verse 13. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest. I know where you live. I know what you do, and I know where you live. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest. Even where Satan's seat is. Satan's seat. Satan's throne on earth, people. That was Pergamos. Right now, that is an Islamic, Muslim, Ottoman Turk occupied territory. I wonder why the Muslims took that particular area. Hmm. I'll give you three guesses. First two don't count. It's where Satan's seat is. How would you like to live in a, uh, the city, the church in the city where Satan's throne was? Uh, talk about a rough neighborhood. Wow. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name. What name is that? Jesus. Jesus. J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus. And thou hast and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Ah. But I have a few things against thee. Ah, oh, okay. These guys got some good things going for them, right? But they got a couple things that, you know, it's not making the Lord too happy. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Who was Balaam? 
He was a prophet, one of God's prophets, but he fell into, he did a Judas thing. Yeah. What did he do? Who taught Balak? Now, who was Balak? Balak was a Canaanite king. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Ah. Somebody sacrifices a, a meal to Satan, and then they present it to you, and you know it was dedicated to Satan. Are you going to drink of the cup of devils? What? Well, how about uh, 1 Corinthians 10.21? Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. God doesn't want us eating things sacrificed to idols or devils and to commit fornication. What do you think Balak did? He sent all his pretty Canaanite women to go seduce the men. And I will admit it. Guys are fools for a woman with a good-looking woman. Boy, you get a good-looking woman. I, I, I've, uh, no, they, trouble. Trouble. All these men that get these trophy wives, uh, I don't know. You know, a rich guy will marry a, a gorgeous looking woman, and a gorgeous looking woman will marry a rich guy, right? Uh, not exactly a match made in heaven. I think it's a match made in the other place, but what can I tell you? But, uh, Someone once said that uh, a woman that marries for money will earn every single penny. Yeah. Because the rich guy is going to cheat on her and she'll probably end up cheating on him. And uh, and I'll tell you what, you get a, a super wealthy family and the woman tries to leave and divorce, don't be surprised when they end up dead. It happens. And when the rich family owns the police force, guess what? The, nothing, hap, nothing comes of the investigation. Evidence never makes it to the evidence locker. Yeah, we never found any shell casings for that, uh, you know. Or even better yet, hire the police to uh, get rid of her, right? Yeah. Yeah. To eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. That's what Balak did. He sent his gorgeous looking women to seduce the guys. And they fell for it every time almost. Verse 15. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Now, I'm not exactly 100% sure, but according to, as I understand it, the Nicolaitans uh, were the ones that turned, or the original ones that turned grace into a license to sin. You know, oh, well, we're not under the law. You know, I, I, can, I can keep my job as a hitman for the mafia. You know, I believe in Jesus. I'm going to heaven. Uh, that kind of thing. You know, all sins are covered by the blood of Christ. Well, yeah. But in verse 16, okay, well, let's read verse 15 again. So hast thou also, also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I ha hate. Repent. Uh, repent. Now listen. I know I covered this in part three, but I'm going to say it again. 
Uh, some people teach that when the Lord tells you to repent, he's telling unbelievers to believe. Change your mind from unbelief to belief. Okay, but Jesus is talking to a church here. Does the church believe? Or does the church not believe? I mean, come on. So how can repent mean turn from unbelief to belief? It can't. Because you've got a believing church here that the Lord's telling them to repent. Repent of what? Their wickedness. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden, hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saying, saving, he that received it. All right, so, Mystery Babylon. You've got uh, America as a possible candidate, New York City, uh, Turkey, okay, Islam, uh, Istanbul, which is the capital of Turkey, used to be called Constantinople until those peaceful Muslims went in and murdered all the Greeks, the Christian Greeks, yeah. Uh, I've heard Mecca, Saudi Arabia, yeah, I've heard Russia, I've heard Germany, Assyria, no, I don't think so. Uh, so, uh, what else? Oh, of course, Rome, the Vatican, because, let's face it, when Jesus was walking the earth, who was basically the ruler of the world then? Rome was. Did Rome... Did Jesus ever condemn Rome? Huh? Did he? I gave somebody a hundred bucks if you could show me anywhere in the Bible where Jesus went to Caesar and told Caesar to repent. Or any Roman, uh, you know, not other than Pontius Pilate, you know. Did Jesus go to the Roman Caesar and tell him to repent? No. Who did Jesus condemn? Oh, Bob, that's the religious leaders. Uh, the religious leaders. Oh, you mean those Buddhists? Uh, well, no, they didn't have Buddhists in there then. Oh, okay. Shinto of Japan? Uh... No, they weren't there. Uh, the Mormons? Uh, no, Joseph Smith hadn't been born then. How about uh, Charles Taze Russell, Jehovah's Witnesses? No, Bob, don't be silly. He hasn't been born yet. Oh, okay. Ellen White, the Seventh-day Adventist? Come on, Bob, they had, she hadn't been born yet. Oh, okay. Um, who was Jesus condemning? Oh, that's right, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Yeah, those, those were the ones that he condemned. And if you don't know who they are, uh, the word rhymes with uh, news, like a newspaper, and it starts with a J. Yeah. Yeah, that's who Jesus condemned for their hypocrisy. Read John chapter 6 if you don't know who I'm talking about. And then read John chapter 8. I mean, you know. Does Satan really want to rule from Vatican City? I mean, I'm not discounting Islam. I'm not counting the, the, the Vatican's uh, system of, you know, it's got probably over a billion members worldwide. 
I'm not discounting any of that. They're all part of the B system. Of course, so are the Southern Baptists, in my opinion. Uh, basically, 90-something percent of the churches, in my opinion, work for the enemy. I mean, I looked for years for a church. I looked and looked and looked and looked. And I'm not looking for a perfect church. Because if I found a perfect church and I joined, it wouldn't be perfect anymore. But, I mean, come on. I mean, at least be halfway decent. I couldn't find any. And we're all a bunch of sheep scattered far and wide. And I can't believe how easily people get offended. And I mean, easily offended. I'm not that hard to offend. But if you blaspheme Christ, you're out of here. You wouldn't believe all the number of people I've blocked on Facebook because they blasphemed Christ. One gal was uh, telling me the, uh, the Holy Spirit is God's wife. I'm like, what? Where'd you get that in the Bible? Oh, well, the Bible's mistranslated. Okay, see you later. See you later, alligator. So where does Satan want to rule from? Where's Mystery Babylon? Simple. Where was the temple located in the days of Solomon? Jerusalem. Where was Jesus crucified? In Jerusalem. Where did Jesus preach probably more than anywhere else? Oh, maybe, well, maybe not, maybe well, he preached a lot in Jerusalem. I don't know if more than anywhere else, but, you know, he was in the temple. You know, Jerusalem, people. I mean, the city of David. They Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. Matter of fact, it was the capital of Israel until the split under uh, when Solomon's son took over. Jerusalem was the capital. And that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to rule from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, where the prophets were killed. Jerusalem, where the two witnesses will appear confronting the false prophet. That's it, people. I mean, come on. The city of David. Let's read some stuff real quick from the Bible. Revelation 18, 21. And a mighty angel, a mighty angel, took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city, great city, great city, Babylon, be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Now, you got to understand something. Babylon, where Nebuchadnezzar, the king, when he invaded Israel, uh, Judah and Jerusalem and took everybody captive, you can read about that in Ezekiel, you can read about that in Jeremiah, you can read about it in Isaiah, you can read about it in the book of Daniel. Daniel, the book of Daniel takes place, uh, I believe, exclusively in Babylon. Or almost exclusively, 90% of it, I'm sure, you know. But Babylon was destroyed by the Medes and the Persians. It was destroyed. And I cover that in another study. I'm not going to cover it again. So there was no physical Babylon when John's writing this stuff. It doesn't exist. All right, let's skip to Revelation 18, 24. And in her, who? Babylon. And in her was found the blood of prophets, the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Uh, when did the Lord send prophets to America? New York City. 
Saudi Arabia, Mecca, Istanbul. How about the Vatican City, Rome? God never sent prophets to them. Where did God send his prophets? Jerusalem. Babylon was responsible for the blood of the prophets and of all that were slain upon the earth. Revelation 16, 6, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Guess what? One of the plagues that God sends, well, one of his two, his two witnesses that are sent of the Lord, they turn the water to blood. Revelation 6, 17 and verse 6. And I saw the woman, well, this is not the church. This is the whore. God wants, Christ wants a bride, a virgin bride, not a whore. And here you got a whore. And I, Revelation 17, 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Babylon killed the prophets. Jesus speaking in Luke 13, 33. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Do you get it? Jesus in Matthew 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. What? But, but. Chaplain Bob, I was always taught that uh, the Islamic Antichrist or, 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 or Rome or, you know, the Vatican, uh, uh, I don't think so. No. Rome was not in charge when the Lord sent his prophets to Jerusalem and they killed him. You did not want to be a prophet in the days when people were evil. They had a very, very, very short lifespan, more often than not. Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Oh yeah, the prophets come saying, repent people, you're evil, you're wicked, repent. And the people stone them to death saying, we're God's chosen people. Who do you think you are, hypocrite? Let's kill him. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and that came to pass in 70 AD when the Roman legions under Titus uh, leveled Jerusalem and burned it. Now here, the two end time witnesses of God are mentioned. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies, and if you don't believe me, read the whole chapter of 11, uh, Revelation chapter 11 on your own. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Was the Lord crucified in America, New York City, uh, Mecca, Istanbul, Vatican City, Rome? No, he was crucified in Jerusalem. But Chaplain Bob, the Romans were in charge. Uh, so they didn't take him to Rome and crucified him. And besides, it wasn't the Romans that killed Jesus. Not my Bible, maybe your Bible. 
maybe your modern translation. My Bible says the Lord was crucified in Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Not Rome, not Mecca, not the USA. Who do we believe? Jesus? Commentaries? TV preachers on TBN? How about Paul? Oh, but Paul's a false apostle. Who says, you devil? Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14, 15, and 16. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Who do they kill? Both the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and they please not God and they please not God and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles divorced Israel and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Can anybody show me from the Bible alone where Rome or Islam killed the prophets? Let me know. I can't find it. And I am no friend of Rome. And I know she murdered many. And Islam has killed many. But they're not Mystery Babylon. And then they'll say, well, Rome is on seven hills. Well, guess what? So is Jerusalem. So is Moscow, communism, which murdered millions. So is Istanbul, Islam. So is Seattle, Washington. Microsoft, 666, right? Matthew 23, 34. Wherefore, behold, Jesus speaking here. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the blood, all the righteous blood, shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. Whoa! Whoa, he just, he just traced them back to shedding the blood of righteous Abel. Who killed Abel? Cain. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcheus, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. I believe that Zacharias was the, the father of John the Baptist. Somebody else said it was. They killed the father of John the Baptist. I believe. Verse 36. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? And ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Wow. Revelation 18.24 And in her was found the blood of prophets, and of saints, and of all, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Are you getting the picture here? Jerusalem, people! Satan wants to rule from the city of David. Babylon was responsible for the blood of prophets. Luke 13, 33, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, 
For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Wow. What does the Bible say about Jerusalem? Oh, well, there's a lot of good things the Bible says about uh, Jerusalem. But there's also some bad things the Lord says about Jerusalem. So, should we take a look? Yeah. Isaiah 3 and verse 8. Uh, for Jerusalem is ruined. Oh, this is when the Babylonians came in and wiped them out. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen. Because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Jeremiah 4 and verse 14. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Jeremiah 8, 5. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Jeremiah 9, 11. And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons. Oh, who was called the old, that old serpent, uh, the dragon? Revelation 12, the devil and Satan. And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. Jeremiah 13, 27, I have seen thine adulteries and thy nayings the lewdness of thy whoredom and thine abominations on the hills in the fields. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem, wilt thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? Jeremiah 19.3. Jeremiah is depressing. And you know what? I read Jeremiah and I think of America and Europe today. Jeremiah 19.3. And say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will bring evil. I will bring evil upon this place. The which whosoever heareth, his ears shall tingle. Jeremiah 23, 14. I have seen also in the, of, also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Didn't the Lord liken the place where Jeru Jude J Jesus was crucified like Sodom in Egypt? They are all all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Jeremiah 44, 9. Have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of your wives and your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Lamentations 1 and verse 8. Jerusalem hath grievously sinned. Therefore, she is removed. All that honored her despise her, because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sigheth and turneth backward. Ezekiel 16.2 Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. Oh, boy. Malachi 2.11 Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. Ooh, doggy. Does this sound like, uh, what is this? What does that sound like? Doesn't sound too good to me. All right, let's read Micah chapter 3 real quick. Verse 1, And I said, Here I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Who hate the good 
and love the evil. They loved evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them, and they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and as flesh within the cauldron. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at the time as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. Err. You know what err means? It's where the word error comes from. That make my people to do wrong. That bite with their teeth and cry, Peace! And he that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against them. Therefore, shall, uh, therefore night shall be unto you, you know, darkness, that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed. A seer is just an Old Testament word for prophet. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded, yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. God's not going to speak to them anymore. Verse 8, But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of judgment and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. Hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel, that abhor or hate, that abhor judgment. They hated judgment and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood. They build up Zion with blood. Isn't that what's going on in the Middle East right now? They build up Zion with blood. And Jerusalem with iniquity. Iniquity is sin. They build up Zion with blood. And Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof judge for reward. They take bribes, people. The judges take bribes. And the priests thereof teach for hire. Oh yeah, they're hirelings. They're not shepherds of the Lord. They're hirelings. And when they see the wolf come, they run. Because they don't care about the sheep. They're just paid. They're paid mercenaries for the devil. The heads thereof judge for reward. And the, preach, the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come among us. None evil can come upon us. Why, we're the Lord's chosen people. The Lord loves all of us. The Lord loves us all. Verse 12. Therefore shall Zion, for your sake, be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. You know what you do with a field? When you're a farmer, you plow it. Everything that's on top of the ground gets plowed under. It gets knocked down. And that's what John, uh, the Lord did to Jerusalem. He plowed it into the ground. He had Babylon come and took all of them into captivity. And sad to say, Daniel and the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Sheep, Meshach, and Abednego, were like the only, the only ones that were truly faithful that were mentioned in the Word of God. Not many people. God has a remnant. I don't know about you, but I hope I'm I hope He gives me the strength to be one of His remnants. I haven't been as faithful as I should be. And that's for sure. I've broken a lot of promises to the Lord. People, stay close to the Lord. Learn as much as you can. Put King James Bibles away. 
The older, the better they are. They're changing everything now. I don't trust anything anymore. There's going to come a day when the words of Jesus are going to be illegal. There's already laws on the books on, in the United States to make the words of the Lord Jesus illegal. They're called the Noahide laws. And if you listen to the Seventh-day Adventists, they'll tell you, oh, it's the Sunday laws. Well, guess what? The Noahides, look it up. Look it up, people. The penalty for breaking a capital crime in the Noahide laws is death. Method of execution, beheading. Oh, yeah. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Beheaded, people. Beheaded. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Which is only the introduction, people. All right, I hope you learned something. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.